Well, shooters and reloaders out there, Fortune Cookie 45 LC coming to the hot lead zone. And what I'm doing here is I'm reloading some 45 Schofield. Now, we can't do a video on the reloading of that because, as you know, YouTube has prohibited reloading videos, among others. So, to not rile up the uh, problems, we won't do the reloading of the 45 Schofield. However, the interesting thing about the 45 Schofield is that it's a rimmed cartridge that actually has a rim that is a little bit wider than the 45 Colt rim, even though the rest of the round is very similar. So that if you have a 45 Colt shell holder, you can't use that shell holder for the 45 Schofield. And vice versa, the 45 Schofield shell holder. If you put a 45 Colt in there, it tends to slip out. So we need a special shell holder for the 45 Schofield, and that got me to thinking about rim the cartridges and how important they really are to us. But the problem is that a lot of today's newer shooters view rim cartridges as being outmoded or obsolete or more important for black powder and this kind of thing, whereas the rimless, like the 9mm, the 45 ACP, the 223, the 308, the 300 Blackout, the 6.5 Creedmoor are all rimless rounds, as if rimless was the modern way to go and the only way to go. And part of that is that the history is that way, in fact, because in the black powder era, the rim cartridges ruled supreme. And that all maintained itself right up until the change over to smokeless powder. And that's when the Germans went to a rimless round with a 8mm Mauser, and then the U.S. followed suit very soon after by abandoning the 3040 rimmed Krag and went to the 3003 which was the first rimless round that the U.S. military had. But that only lasted for three years, and the 30-06 was an upgrade, and rimless it was. Now, for those of you who consider that rim cartridges are obsolete, bear in mind that the round of the latter British Empire was none other than the 303 British, which is a rim cartridge that served also through World War I and World War II. And not only that, but the Russians used a rim cartridge, their famed 762 by 54 r They also used that through World War I and World War II, and in fact still use this today in their PKM machine guns. So this is still in service. And it is the longest running military round in existence. The Russians are no slouches when it comes to small arms ammunition. Now, also in Africa, the rim cartridges were very popular among the dangerous game animal hunting and the loads for dangerous game, such as this 470 Nitro Express a rimmed round. And when it comes to sporting rounds, let's not forget the rimmed 3030 Winchester, which probably has taken more deer than any other cartridge in existence, as well as the fine 4570, again a rimmed cartridge that is capable of taking all game on the North American continent and probably all game across the world. So there's a definite tendency to feel that rimless rounds are more aesthetic, more racy, more modern, and the rounds, because there's no flange coming out from the rim, that these rounds will feed better through all guns, and that's a commonly held belief. Well, whenever you hear the argument that rimmed cartridges don't feed reliably, just remember that Great Britain won the Battle of Britain 
with 303 ammunition in their Hurricane fighters that had eight Browning 303 machine guns on board and they function just fine. Plus, in the sands of North Africa and everywhere else where the battles were waged, the 303 functioned just fine in the Bren light machine guns so famed by British troops. Plus, let's not forget the famed British Lee Enfield that fired these 303 rounds at an amazing speed of fire. All rimmed rounds from the Lee Enfield. They fed just fine. Note that the 303 British cartridge is also a very much used sporting round all around the world. Now then, the 7.62 by 54R was used by the Soviet Union and they won the Second World War using this cartridge in the Mosin Nagant rifles. So they fed just fine, even though they got a rim. Plus, the machine guns that the Soviet Union have that chamber this had no problems functioning in full automatic fire. And in fact, the PKM light machine gun is still used by the Soviet Union today, as well as the semi-automatic Dragunov sniper rifles that they use. So this is still used today, a rimmed cartridge, not obsolete at all. Now the 4570 functioned just fine to the point where they used it in Gatling guns. That the US Navy actually used the Gatling guns firing 4570 rounds for some of their ships back in the early days. Rimmed around. Not a problem in the functioning. And today any number of lever action rifles go ahead and function these rim rounds very nicely to the point that there's just no thought of them being obsolete there either. In fact, let's look at some of the advantages of rimmed cartridges that are still advantages today. Number one is headspace control because the headspace of rim rounds is determined by the thickness of the rim. That's it. The rim from the front of the rim to the back of the rim, that's the headspace. And in the chamber, the accommodating space for the rim is the headspace in the gun. This is a very short distance and easy to control, easy to manufacture and produce and control, not only in the ammunition but also in the guns. So that's the first advantage. Look at the 30 odd 6, the head space is measured from the back of the cartridge head to a datum line that's on the shoulder. Well, how much more can go wrong in that distance there? Even when the firing pin's hitting the primer, it's possible to drive the case forward enough to set the shoulder back a thousandths or two before the round goes off increasing the danger of headspace. Whereas on rimmed cartridges, the impact of the firing pin will not cause any change in the headspace because of the nature of the rim. Also notice that cutting out the extractor groove on the head of a rimless round causes removal of brass that's not removed in a rimmed round. So at the head of the brass casings are stronger because of that. So that's significant, more than we think. Notice that if there are any irregularities in the chamber on a rimmed cartridge, that the headspace is controlled to the point where irregularities don't matter, the case will fire form very nicely to the chamber. But those same irregularities can affect the headspace when the head space is measured off a datum line right there on the shoulder. So that if you're trying to set a different angle on the shoulder, then what's going to stop that round from going forward in the chamber and then cause a problem with a brass stretching because you've got excessive head space because of that chamber 
having a sharper shoulder. You've got to do something in the meantime to fire form that brass instead. With a rim case, you just go ahead and fire form it, no problem. And finally, if your case is a straight wall case, the rim controlling the headspace allows you to lengthen or shorten the brass casing to create different cartridges without any problem at all. So we can have a 4570 or a 4555 or a 4590 or 4500 or 45110. Very easy, all because of the rim. Notice that the type of bullet doesn't matter whether it's got a rim or whether they're rimless. So shooters and reloaders out there, we've got lots of options and choices in our sporting rifle cartridges and sporting handgun cartridges. And whether they're rimmed or rimless, or whether they're rebated, or whether they're belted, these all have pros and cons, and they're all useful, and they all can be safe. We need to understand the differences to make us better shooters. So take care. Bye for now.